everyone, I'm Max Angor, and we are back with more Disco. Um, so, we took Chip to the park. Well, we took Chip to, to his neighbor's house, and um, he had fun. And so that leaves me with free time. So I'm going to play some Disco Elysium. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So let's get, a, let's get our call back in. You see a set of in. steering levers, a radio microphone. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? I was told I need to connect, to connect to my station, the 41st Lazarus. It will take just a moment, officer. Her voices fade out into the familiar radio static. Voices? <laughs> Gottlieb, what do you want? <laughs> oh, what do I even say? I'm in a bad way, Doc. Real bad way. Oh, it's you. Was that a snarl or a suppressed groan? No love for you here. You know who I am? Yes, there's no end to the misfortunes fate has seen fit to rain upon me. Sure, sure. But can you tell me about myself, as in who I am? Who? You are? You lost your human visage a while back. Now let's get on with it. I've got more important things to do. I couldn't reach up and grab a tie from a spinning fan without unbearable pain shooting through my arm. Hard to tell exactly what it was over the phone. Could be a combination of uh, peripheral neuralgia and high blood pressure. Could be that you were having a heart attack. Or, actually, it could be both, given your profile. Wait, both? But that sounds bad! Yep. No wonder I'm so in so much pain. I feel like I've been damaged. Yes, probably in more ways than one. You're detecting very little in the way of empathy from Dr. Gottlieb. So what can I do? Cut down on the drinking, pal. In fact, cut off the drinking. The drugs, too. Anything else? Oh, but speed. Sweet speed. It goes so well with alcohol, too. I think I've had a heart attack. And you survived it. Congratulations. Are you mobile? Sort of. But by God, does it burn in your chest. Yes. Even better. Anything else? I wouldn't worry about that. Officers your age have carny trouble all the time. Also, death is a natural part of life. Accept it. The body is an object, and objects break down. Do what good you can with yours, before the rest goes too. I've lost my memory. All of it. With all the damage you've been dealing yourself with drugs and alcohol, I'm not surprised. There is no surprise in his voice. Only careless superiority. You're not surprised, okay. Anything else? What else? I'm not a brain doctor. Look on the bright side. You've got a whole new life now. Use it wisely. It's hard to say if he doesn't believe you, or doesn't care. Isn't there anything you can do for me? What? You want me to do blood work for you again? Tell you just how bad things really are across the board? You want another rundown of everything collapsing inside your body? Yes, I want the truth. You want the real, honest-to-God truth? Stop drinking, eat magnesium, and vitamin D. Our station is not our retirement home. We don't have the funds to deal with rock stars past their prime. So it's political. You're being neglected because of political reasons. The money is probably going to some old... Oily. And no, I don't want to hear a political <laughs> commentary on the topic. In fact, I got work to do. Some idiot has glued his eyelids shut with cyanoacrylate. It looks like Mectorsen. It's not fucking cryoactylate. It's super glue, Doc. I guess that's it for now. Mm -hmm. Phone clicks. Suddenly you hear the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Could you connect me to the 41st Precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After you, after a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His, voice, his rattly voice is oddly familiar. 10 to 10 five. This is 41st. Uh, come in. Over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. Hi, this is me here. I work at your station. Then for what's your status? Over. Uh, it's not good. 
10, 18, 10, 20, over. Please just talk human to me. These numbers mean nothing to me. State your message, sir. Over. <laughs> I need to report my badge missing. 10, 9, repeat message, over. My badge, I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. 10 4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. 1022 the captain. This sounds bad. Bad and scary. Like being called to the headmaster's office in school. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. He says fighting off laughs, laughter. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Come on, operator, tell him to stop. This is serious. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Satellite officer Vitmar conquers. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Haha, ha, lo officer lost his badge. Haha, ha, like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh, god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us! Can't we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. 10-4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Super Cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Didn't you glue your eyes shut earlier and now you're making fun of me? He <laughs> lost a badge. <laughs> Could you all please st just stop saying lost his badge for a moment? He asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. <laughs> Enough of this now. I have other things to discuss. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun, too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? I don't have my gun! No. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. 10-9, come in officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Ah. Uh... 10-1, you're breaking up. 10-9, repeat please. Over. 10-9, come in officer. Over. Come in officer. 10-9, repeat message please. Did you misplace your firearm? Over. That's affirmative. Over. He says he doesn't have it. Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> this isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face the giant of Coco Nur by himself. <laughs> but this go in, I him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his a ask him if he still got his wiener. I'm not going to. Ask him. Uh, Sergeant Orson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. Now is a good time to say fuck and ass and so on. That'll make this all right. <laughs> I left it at his mama's after I fucked her ass all night. Tell him that. <clears throat> That's a negative. Not going to say that. Over. What's he saying? Share with the class. He, uh, he said he sodomized your mother. The prick ate mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. <clears throat> sure her vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. <clears throat> Sergeant Orson requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. 
people there. Okay, tell him I'm sorry. It was just banter. I thought that's what cops do. He says he's sorry and didn't mean nothing by it. Okay. Tell him. Tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters here. Satellite officer. <laughs> I heard him and I'm on it. Then for affirmative. Officer in pursuit of his firearm. Oh god, I. Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. This might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, 10 4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information, not fear! Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10 4, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Hold on, are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. That's a negative, so I got a 1012 here. Over. I wanted to know if you've got my badge's description right in your report. Could you read it to me? Name, rank, date of birth? What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachoian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. Yeah, let's wrap this up. Good, sir. Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. Eighteen kilometers to the south, in the 41st Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier. Around a dozen cops, the small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages, and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? She asks, startled. Uh, uh, she asks, startled. John McVickmeyer turns to her and says, What happened is my partner made contact. It's not good. He's lost his badge and his sidearm. He seemed confused, delirious even. He stops to think. Why is there static when he talks, but not when she talks? Mac. The torso Torson is finger-fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, Max right. That was some gnarly shit there. Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. Mino looks down to her neat, neatly polished black shoes. There's a quiet firmness to her voice when she speaks. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on car juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. The crowd in the room has started fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to slip out unnoticed. Mag, man the door. He just You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. He gestures Torsen to block the doorway, then turns to me now. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. I guess I can hold over the report for a few days. Old boy lights up another cigarette. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. We need more of these things. More thoughts. More thinkings. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Why am I looking at your trash container? You're just a trash container. Well, it is a container. Maybe you're prioritizing it. Lieutenant, what do you think could be in there? Trash, 
food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence, too. Yes, I feel like there's something in there. What do you mean, feel? It's extrasensory perception. Whatever is in there holds a, set, a special significance. I agree. We should get someone from the remote viewers division here. Say nothing. The lieutenant leans in to inspect the lock. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. The one you took from my motor carriage, or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Yeah, we'll do that later. surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Try to push on the door. The door does not budge. I wonder where this door leads. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Out of duty, we may find something pertinent to the investigation. Hmm. Yes. I suppose it's worth seeing if we can get in. Just to be thorough as a side investigation. The door and the main investigation will merge into a stereo investigation. If you say so, Gart is the person to ask about this. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Garanzi and Quebec. It must be his name. Garanzi. Garanzi Quebec. Sounds representative. Hello, sir. Got time for a few questions? The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. You know what's behind that door? Point to the blue door. He looks up at you, then looks away quickly, shrugging and muttering something to himself. You've got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. I don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine. Can I help you? I talked to Sylvie. She left because of me, not you. Wait, what? But what about the bird? Bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. She didn't break it. I did. I threw it against the wall. You broke the skewer! His face is flushed with emotions. A rash covers his neck. I assure you it was him. It's as if he can't decide whether to be angry or relieved that it was you. Again. Why on earth did you have to break the skewer? It's a mystery. I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. Symbol of hope and all. That bird ain't no symbol of hope. It's a menace and a traitor. All right. Did she say anything else about me, you know? Did, did she say anything about me? She said she was flattered. It was just bad timing. Really? I, I should I should give her a call then. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted, or...? Or can you give him a moment? Somehow you realize this is not going to net you any professional discounts. 
Already he's reverting back to defensive. Is the trash container out back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put that trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. No, it doesn't. Nothing stirs in me. And it isn't callous, it's common sense. Okay, then. Maybe you're callous yourself. <laughs> what have I told you? I am a hobo, or soon to be one, rummaging through that trash. Will you keep me out, too? No. We need those keys. What do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. I've seen something here in the Whirling in Rags I need to talk what about. thing? There's a mysterious blue steel door at the back of the kitchen. Oh yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. So just to be clear, you don't know how to open it? Nope. No idea. Don't want to either. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Hobocop. Technically, you wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures. But who knows where the hobo part takes you? To the bar? The old Lassemoir? To the pier or the sewers? To Le Royaume, where, for 300 years, they interred the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long-forgotten triple malt bourbon. Then fight the Ardamakan beast that lurks the bottommost sepulchers. The secrets of the city are all yours at last. Yay! This trash container is locked. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Didn't I just have a premonition that there's something in there? There is. But you won't like it. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look under the boxes of carton. You see, milk, an egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batisole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Pick up the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers? As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaverino door is faint. If these belonged to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. The lieutenant produces a black pa plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. Guitar mark blue jeans. Pockets empty or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too, a white belt. The loops appear stretched, but. He looks into the container. The belt is missing. <clears throat> That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long sleeved shirt, olive colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. 
This is the kind of ribbed shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... A thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. Yeah, we need to ask the kids who put them there. The fuck's he on about? Kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? Think some from the rolling might have been involved, maybe? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. Search the food waste. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Take it out. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes. Written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your... Paperwork? I don't know what this is. It is. Look. The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. A miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. What are you talking about? I speak with the tongue. Do as though also thorough inventories. You should take stock of your notes. Make sure it's all there. Official notes contain informants' names. If some of it has fallen into the hands of the RCM's adversaries, bloodletting may well ensue. Okay, I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? Mug, I'm getting that mug too. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Mm -hmm. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. Tremble. The time is now. Taola. What time? Time for the show. For Taola. The hallowed time of fear and disintegration. A countdown has begun. All will collapse on itself. The world will disappear into a single grain of blackness. All sound will be muted. All life will scream. Uh, Ola, what's that? Ulogu Theodos. Xino Zausin. Ipoli Osidien. Echondes Fronisin. Wait, wait, when did this countdown begin? Monday morning. The moment you arrived in this reality are the first crack in the sheer face of God. From you it will spread. This is because of the insane world ending I've been saying, isn't it? Yes, you spoke the words of the Palindropos and the houses of Pericarnassus. Items, people, even words will tumble. All will lose its meaning in the coming years. That is why you marked yourself. Am I sure it's not just some kind of joke or a coping mechanism? It's totally also a coping mechanism. I do think the world will end soon. The face of the woman fractures. There will be herd killing. We all become vapor. Top of the apocalypse. Rambling madman. You woke up in a hotel room and started rambling about the end of the world. It's not your normal everyday doom crying either. Something truly colossal is approaching. The gloaming, the culling, the bloodletting of unimaginable proportion. Until now, you've been pleasantly vague about the precise nature of this cataclysm. No more. Put the bloodletting on the burner and really figure out what's threatening the fragile physical reality you just found yourself in. Fuck yeah! We're doing stuff! 
But first we're going to give the key back to Gart because we're nice. We're a nice hobo cop of the Can apocalypse. I help you? Here you go. Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. Found the victim's clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Could someone on your staff have put them there? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Who else has keys to the trash container? The trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. On Clinton Street, near the Boogie Street Diamond, a small truck rattles down an alleyway. It stops by a rusted trash container. Two men, their faces rough and swollen, jump out. They look at the container, despondently. CSM is written on their backs. Thank you, anyway. Yes? Okay. Now let's confront the Kuno. Oh wait, we can get physical instrument from other things. I'm gonna need that. Eh. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. I have questions. Of course. What can I help you with? Who are you exactly? Me? I am just a gardener. Cool, and what are you doing here? I am working. Working on what? I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. There's discomfort. She stops mid-sentence. But? Well, as you probably know, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Of course. I won't hold you back. She wipes her brow with the, yellow, uh, the canary yellow gloves. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. <clears throat> you have a dead body to deal with, after all. One more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. Yay, gloves. Pick latex gardening gloves in classic and area yellow. Maybe you should retire and take up gardening as a hobby. It's worth a thought. Let's interact with a racist mug. This broken-eared mug somehow made its way into whirling in rags. It depicts a person of Samaran does descent frolicking in a field of saffron flowers, buck-toothed and grinning feeble-mindedly. Seems to be a cheap knockoff of some colonial-era antique. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. There's quite a lot to read into here, actually. Look at all that content. Oh boy. Here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed-away mug that you dug out of the garbage? The mug didn't belong in the trash, it was just a funny mug. Can anyone laugh anymore? Understood. You're that kind of detective. Why don't you get back to your case? Don't you judge me, random voice. I'll do what I want. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Still wet. The toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila, 
The ledger now looks marginally better. Inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across the aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Hey, Lieutenant, what's this? What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like? All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What's in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Is two weak cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appears to have been my caseload, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. <clears throat> I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. A nice, brisk pace, the way I like it. I prefer a normal caseload. It's a matter of method. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. There was a mention of a naming convention here. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins, yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. Oh my, they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Ukar parlor. Even the rare Article 3 collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. You like this grimy murdering, don't you? It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Yeah, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean a non-numeric one with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named a case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that. 
to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Mid to paper. The tasks you've completed flow out of the pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. Cross out the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? The Hanged Man. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good we sorted this out. More thoughts. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. It's proving to be harder than expected. You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later? It's possible, yes. Easy, no. You need to come up with a small archaeological system to reorder the remains of your past works. At the moment, all they do is fall apart in your hands. Some dates in the numeric titular system is all you have. Browse the yellow papers. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out according to type of form. What types of form are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. Misconduct fine. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. Station call? These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. Field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age. Sex. Condition of internal organs, color of the irises, predation marks, condition of sexual organs. Enough of these. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. Smell the ledger. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat. The stuff of death itself. And then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back you see the embossed letters RCM. What'd you say the color was? Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli. But it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. How would I open it? With your hands. You four-sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. 
is not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open, but nothing happens. Then you bend it some. Then crack it. The goddamn thing is stuck. A hot flash of rage comes over you. For a moment there, before it recedes, you feel as though you might just squeeze a tear of anger out of your duct. Makes you wonder, why? It's unjust, that's why. You can't even get to that thing anymore. The ledger quivers in your hand as it shakes the pages rustle. This pathetic mess suddenly afraid of you for some reason. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. How do I turn on the headlights? All right. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant is more than happy to show off his precious carriage. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rounds per minute gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Canada comes to life with a whiny growl. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Reva West. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the water <laughs> are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. Look at the street grid. The rectangular water <laughs> is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet, the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Wait, look around you. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stopped lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. In the middle of a broken plaza, in a cone of light, barely visible in the daytime, two men, one slim, the other sturdy, they are on the city stage, but only one of them knows his lines. Ah, Martinez. Where are we on this? Let me see. He takes the ledger for a moment and inspects it. Right here. He says, his finger near the top of the map, on a segment of coast jutting out into the great ocean. Seems nice. No, it does not. Look at the perforations. There are many of them. And they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. What about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Count them individually. There are so many, it's hard to count. More than 150, at least. Maybe even 200. What about the last row? The last row has three perforations. Three, that's it? That's it. Hey Kim, what do all these holes mean? Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Son, here is where we score your life performance. You better hope it's good. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Do you really think I have any idea? <laughs> I walk the land telling whores and liars of the end to come. There are 9,855 days remaining. Cool. I'm glad you joined us. Not a lot of money in doom crying. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see. Wow, more than 200. Is that a lot? It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. It used to be good. That's some solace, I guess. What's the last number? Right. Those are your confirmed kills. 
You've got precisely three perforations there. So I'm a killer. That's right. A killer of humans. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamrock Quarter, it's rather um, tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. He's sincerely glad you're not a scary predator. Not to say relieved you're competent. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes. It's not a problem for him to state it, however. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. He gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Maybe I should take up a hobby. Why not gardening? You've already got the gloves. It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. Thanks for this. The lieutenant nods. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. Jamais vu. Derealization. Jamais vu. The opposite of déjà vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. finally get all around to selling all these bottles. Oh, there they are. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene. You are a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. Shouldn't I ask what the game it is? No, you got this. There's the ball. You're the game. Acting without. <laughs> Show them how it's done. Oh shit! You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. Feel the ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight. The nervous system calibrating. 
until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. Take in the surroundings. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind. Everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. There's time for a last glance inward. Who am I? An embodiment of pure motion. A fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Behold the fear and confusion reflecting in the eyes of the two feeble geezers. They are in awe of your superiority. <laughs> you are a god to them. Some would still say you're a cop, but I guess we're beyond that now. Inertia can be contained no more than a bullet leaving a gun. Let go. Be the bullet. <laughs> he shot put the ball. Bordel de merde! What the hell is your problem? I'm a god of track and field. Why would I have a problem with anything? I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. A man his age getting worked up like that? Better watch that blood pressure. <laughs> don't be a sore loser. It's still a fair game between you two. Second place is a podium position. You vandalized our game, son. We can't play petonk with five bull. I thought it was shot put. Well, it damn well isn't. It's Petonk. You ruined a Petonk game. We want our bull back. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you orange slug. You are as a goddamn bull. Okay, I'll try to fix this. Good. Mistakes are forgiven. When men at least try to right their wrongs, I believe you will try. <laughs> now, why did you approach us? Just talk. It'll smooth things over. Old people like attention. Do you know anything about the old man hanged in the backyard? Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez, the union is the law. So can you really blame them? Another fucking thing. How long have I been streaming? Looks like almost an hour. Cool. But you don't have a problem with cops? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. Wait, am I not streaming? Oh no, I am. I said to reload. So again, you don't know anything? If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I am an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Do you know what created it? I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. He adds, squeezing a boule in his fist. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. He should have chosen a place away from people and buildings. This place is the damn beachhead, son. They had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling. 
a sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generations. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. Deathblow sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where Coalition Boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hangry enough already. Ah, that explains all the war damage. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Foreign powers cleaned up our mess, and now they rule us. Shake your head in shame. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Friselle had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Who is this Frise? Damn Frisell. He was the king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him, and the crown. He died in the hands of the Hyperle, in a very public execution. Hmm. You mentioned Guillaume? A true king in both blood and mind, led Revachal before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Hmm, what exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is a king! Has everyone forgotten already? They've forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Thank you for your time. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Bruta. <laughs> I love this. What? Sounds like my stomach is growling. Evening falls. The time has come to take the vow. Ow? The vows of blood and flesh. What is my lower intestine going on about? Lower intestine? The term is metabolic and circulatory system. Okay, but what's the hard stuff? Fascism, Brota. What is fascism, though? Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Rivershaw's problems? Leftist academicians. Yes, them, but also women. Women? Women, men of war. You don't like them. They're insane. Their idiocy needs to be scrubbed off this world with rubbing alcohol. Woo men need to go back to the fucking kitchen. I love how he sells it every time it corpses me. <laughs> That's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important. But the main thing is that women need to know their place. Am I having some kind of stomach seizure? Stomach truth. You're having a stomach truth. Why am I getting this? Because you've said the hard things that others won't say. The good things. You've said them many times. Fascism sounds so bad, though. What if we called it something else, like uh, traditionalism? 
Okay. Yes. Let's call it that. Good thinking. Okay, Stomach. I've made up my mind about fascism. Proceeds to the judgment. You're going to keep your vues, right? Keep your vues, Brota. <laughs> I have to. I hear the I hear the the fascism quest is really good. I will keep my vues for the glory of the Revachalian nation. For the nation. Smart. Best not to mention the woo men too often. That's why you're the head and I am the stomach. No. Fascism is about industry and politics and nationhood and not women. I'm absolutely okay with women. Of course you are, Bruta. Of course. But when shape growl sounds from your ass at your stomach. <laughs> God damn it. <clears throat> they fucked this place. Ravishal is in ruins. The Koikos and the Kips and the Armatures. With their desert pygmy magic spinning tops, they fucked it. Orangies, liberals, and vespertine moneylenders, too. Hey! They're all socialists, especially the women and the kips. You only have a vague idea what this means, but it's clear that a good, strong state must be erected upon the ruins. If any of us were to have a future, the shadowy outlines of this state start forming every time you close your eyes. Haggard nationalist. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't, but I want to see. I keep hearing how good it is. I have really hauled down myself. This is divine. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Rene, tsk, tsk, it's a little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Tell me, what do you know about the, old, the dead man? Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. Really? You know absolutely nothing? No, officers. I'm sorry. And I really would like to assist. You are both good guys. I can see that. Then help them, you wimp. You have plenty of shoulder with the ghost caviar in the Union. Someone must know something. I wish I could, but I just don't know anything. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and respects that. Respects? Sounds a bit like you're holding back. I'm not. I'm not even anyone. Of course he's holding back. His mouth is so full of union prick he can't even speak properly. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, René? I'm not anyone impotent in the union. I just know Everhart. How do you know Everhart? Everyone in Martinez knows the Clare brothers. I taught these boys human studies and history in the gymnasium. What do you know about history? You never witnessed history. Only heard about it years later, when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old soldier mumbles something under his breath and turns to face the sea. Let's try not to get caught in a... Lest we leave riddled with bullet holes. This animosity is ancient. Are you a union member? Oh, in many ways, yes. Like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties. Help with little things. Everhart, Edgar, and the older debarders all know me. In many ways? Oh, yes. So you're not an actual member? Not in the technical sense. I don't have a vote or a membership card, but Everhart keeps me on the payroll, just for the little things. Of course he's not a member. He's not a member of anything. I knew that. He's a Vezavain. Turns to where the wind blows and tries to look important. I hate the socialist rabble, but even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence, never committing to anything. Pick a damn side already. What are the little things you do for Everard? Writing work mostly. <clears throat> Occasionally, he needs something written, and I happen to have a way with words, people say. What kind of things do you write for him? Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers. About Martinez, and how things are, and how they could be. Everard and I have these long talks where 
Well, he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's commie propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. Thanks, that's all for now. No, thank you. For being consummate professionals, you'll have this case wrapped up in no time. Looks delicious, can I have a bite? I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. Nothing personal, it's just a principle. The only one you have. Suddenly you realize how hungry you are. The last time you ate must have been God knows when. Please, man, can I just have a bite? Believe me, officer. I wish I could help you, but I need this sandwich to keep my blood sugar stable. In my age, you need to pay attention to these things. You can barely hear him. The sweet smell of pickles in harmony with garlic butter and marinated onions emanating from the sandwich is driving your mind in a singular direction. It must be yours. <laughs> Please, friend, let's just share it. Fuck off! It's mine! Sorry, officer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean it in a bad way. But the sandwich is mine. I'm not gonna share it. When the dissidents come to rape our country, he hides. But try to get a bite of his dear sandwich and he gets claws? We are a special kind of vermin, Gaston. <laughs> but I need that sandwich. Ooh, gloves. A sewer grate, a gateway to the river of filth. Good day to you, officers. Righty. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. His posture is relaxed. Despite his powerful build and a knife in his hand, this man resorts to physical intimidation only infrequently, if at all. You know what caused this wreckage? Point to the smashed billboard in the canal. I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershell. The words, daredevil driver, sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. You know what's further down the coast? Well, there's the fishing village. An abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Can I have some of that salami? Sure thing. Want some too, officer? Why not? Yay, we got food. talk to you later. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. I am the law. You sure are, my man. From another planet. Hey there. What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, and all around clusterfuck. 
Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So how long have you been here? Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? Prepare to spare some change for a working stiff? Huh? Oh. No, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. They who? The bosses, man. Makes sense. First work, then pay. Makes sense. It sucks is what it does. Maybe don't tell people. The people they don't like are actually right. Whoops. <laughs> tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. What's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. What do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. Ka-ching! Anything else I should know? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road toward the horizon and glint of something in his eyes. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. When one's ended, you can get onto the next one. Know anything about the dead man, the one hanging behind the hostel there? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. What are you hauling anyway? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. Okay, and what are you actually hauling? Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. I've got another haul of foul cargo. Mostly sporting goods, tracksuits, and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. <clears throat> so nothing illegal then? Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. That's your rig behind you? This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? Yeah, these lawyers are pretty neat. Neat. For carrying large quantities of cargo a long distance. These foul tracksuits need to find their way to the kids way out in Wamrao and Loran Bird somehow. There it is again. A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he's spent too long in this lorry. Could I get some one of those foul tracksuits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Right, I had another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, ma'am. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Then why are you still hanging around? Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look kindly on missing cargo. 
and it gives me time to work on my rhymes. Who do you think you'd be conducting the drug trade then? Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. What do you see in his eyes? Ease into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. <laughs> My man, I want to know about your soul. You really are the law, aren't you? I get that being bluntly observant and inquisitive comes with the territory, but it certainly doesn't help with your conversational skills, does it? Just like that, he slips out of your reach. It is possible the yelling didn't help. Fuck it, why not? Your best verse. You don't even have a bad verse in here. Just tumbleweed and liquor stains. Wait, no. What are you doing? She broke me. She fucking broke me. That's brutal, man. But you know, time will... No, stop. He's already mortified. <laughs> no, Tommy, these are my rhymes. Listen. She fucked me until I bled. That's, um... In the name of God, what are you doing? <laughs> it's not real, guys. It's not actual thoughts. It's a poem. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And it's cool, but... I'll never be the same again. She's always there. Fuck the case. Fuck everything. Total doom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. These are your rhymes. They're from your life. Doesn't matter if they're robust, they're honest. So, thanks, man. Yes, and I also thank you for stopping. We have a drug investigation to return to. How about we do that? We gotta try. God damn it. Ease into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. Hey, Tommy, spill the beans. What's troubling you? You really are the law. That all the beans you got, Tommy. Damn. It really is hard to talk. Man to man. Don't be a stranger. Wow. You work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. I guess I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse <clears throat> for hard work. What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and lelonium after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. I can ride till I die, bitch. That's just what it's like. Mm. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. I mean, yeah, I did take that bribe from that Joyce woman. Oh, yeah. You took that bribe hard. You're a killer. I guess I made some gills, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? <clears throat> but you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? No, I'm actually not. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave, and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? There's a market for corrupt cops out there, but the immigrant cops have price dumped it. Look, the immigrants are cool. The immigrants play cool music. Everyone likes them, especially the women. Don't hate on the immigrants. They've got nothing to do with you living under a boat. Fucking taxes, man. That's right. 100%. Fucking G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket. Stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Really? Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass. They got their direct and their indirect modes of taxation. <laughs> Sales tax. Excise duty. Extraction tax. 
Alimony. One text that doesn't even have a name. Plus there's the stuff people in other countries pay for. Mm -hmm. That makes them ask for more money from you. Here. Total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money. Are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? No fucking way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. <laughs> Minus two empathy, cold-blooded. First, if you have a side bitch ideology cooking somewhere, don't sweat it. Fight an indirect taxation for the Gossamer State is compatible with all creeds. It's cool like that. You're a cool anarchist now. Unless you don't want to be an anarchist, whatever. Stuff this meal ticket in your eye socket and let's see if we can steal some love back from the robber barons of the customs agency and the banditos of the Insulindian Financial Oversight and Competition Committee. Fuck yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, it only takes an hour 45. Oh, that takes a lot of time. Cool, I'll get that one done as um, sooner than the other ones. stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, Father of Philip the Fourth, the insane. What did he do? You have no idea what you did a week ago. How would you know what this guy did many centuries ago? High above you, the king's is a mystery we'll never know. Ooh, he got a tank top. Tank top, gym vest, reeking of sweat. This sleeveless shirt is the best choice if you're not afraid to show off your masculine upper body and that hairy chest. Plus one physical instrument. Work it. Hmm. What's this? The small, wrinkled woman does mm. not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... Grandma? Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is gray like lead. No. This one is a monster in disguise. Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to ask you some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Snap your fingers twice. Where am I? Who are you? Me? I'm the law around here. Then I don't suppose you could tell me where we are, low man. Uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. Wait, what's so bad about the 50s? The men have the small jewels and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? Where else would you be then? Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution. The side walls and cafes are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture starring Gabriel Buengarro. Until you came along, that is. Sorry to interrupt your dreaming, ma'am. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, 
Loman. <coughs> it was early spring, and the mine behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. Her eyes narrow, and she appears to take your measure. While you, people, were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution, in Mesk, it was a golden age. Who's Gabriel Bonguero? This is Gabriel Bonguero. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick, and his jaw the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. And schoolboys used to memorize all his lines. I think you were in mess when you were young. Someone was. Someone? Are these not your memories? They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? They're beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. They're coming for this, you know? All of this. Right, I have some other questions for you. Police questions. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. What are you hauling? Diamonds. Really? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Okay, but what are you really hauling? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. So you don't know what you're hauling in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. She says that as if something narcotic is the real reason. Wait, you get high off driving a lorry? Oh, it's so much more than a high where I go, Harifa. It's low. I go to the bottom. Yeah, it's definitely some kick. Some terrible kick in the dark. A sleep kick. Perhaps you can find out later. What if the car goes contraband? Then it's contraband, Loman. What? <clears throat> you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand, Hermenegildo. Bad hand? Hermenegildos's bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. I still don't really understand this whole Boyadero thing. Of course not. To truly understand the Boyadero, you need to listen to On the Western Plain. Okay, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring Boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. I'm guessing that doesn't happen? Of course not. The Boyadero returns from the Western Plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. I think I see where this is going. So the Boyadero strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magrit. Then he rides off, because the Western Plain is calling to him. That's not where I thought that was going. You have to understand. A true boyadero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boyadero. Before I came, you seemed away. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. So he doesn't think she's a smuggler? You hear that, old man? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Wait, why is that, Lieutenant? Nothing. I just don't think she's connected to anything. He doesn't want your frail mind caught up in something here. Something unconnected to the case. But connected to this woman tuning out like that. Would you drive a lorry if you get like that? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best communers around. I drive routes no one else will. What routes? Lomonosov's Land, Udajnaya Zemlya, the Western Plain. A terrible cold comes over her rattling her teeth as she stares inward. The Transcatalia Magistral. You for one A. At the Stradas do Mirador. All the good ones. The deep trenches. Where the bluebirds fly. I'm something of an expert in blacking out. You should take better care of yourself. You're right, Loman. I'm the one who should take my health more seriously. Thank you for looking out for me. A correct appraisal. 
You're quite shabby. Is that all you woke me up to say? You seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. What do I need drugs for, Loman? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. The adversary? Yes. There is a protagonist and an adversary. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hole. I don't like the sound of any of that. Sounds like a horrible drug. The worst one of them all. Where could I get my hands on an experience like that? If you don't know, <laughs> What is it you're hauling exactly? Your ma, low man. What of it? Okay, let me put it another way. Are you smuggling drugs through Terminal B? Maybe. Probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. How can you not know what you're hauling in your own lorry? Just this month, I made half of those in trips from Saramiriza to Grad. On the U41A. What do you think they take from Saramiriza to Grad, Loman? Drugs? No, Loman. Diamonds. Damn this. Make her answer. Are you making fun of me right now? You better start complaining. Now, if you had to guess, who do you think is smuggling drugs around here? Easy. He's the skinny man who thinks he's a poet. Never trust a poet. Also, he's the only one I can see from here. That's correct. There is no visibility of any of the others. I will never make fun of a real low man, Herithia. Ma'am, you're not responsible for what the client puts in your lorry, as long as the seals are not opened. We officers know that. Lay offer. Okay, if you're not involved with the drug trafficking, then why are you still waiting here? Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music, or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and the features of this world. It's a good palette cleanser, this jamboree. Or I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will, to the Great Plains. I think we're done here, no? Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Meski. The 15th Indo tribe. Because there was. The 15th Indo tribe was comprised of eight kids from Forberg and North Jamrock, running from wild dogs in the valley, hiding scents under rocks, and stealing clothes off clotheslines, and sometimes even the copper wiring of phone lines. You may have been one of them. This must be a childhood memory. The 15th Indo tribe was your Indo tribe, set to rule in Cylinder. The rest of the kids are dead now. Car accidents and drug overdoses. Only you remain. And I get 10 cents for every green orb clicked. That's why I saved them all. The only thing is, we don't really need... We don't really need Hobo Cop because we've got... Um... Top of the Apocalypse, which does something similar. But anyway, I'm gonna call it here because I need to go for a lap. <clears throat> and I will come back and stream more. Who knows? Maybe I actually am back. Maybe that maybe I'm done with the summer vacation. Like, I mean, like anybody would be surprised that I, I'm a workaholic. So anyway, I have been Max Angor and I will be back in a bit. Let me just save. Wait. There we go.